Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. I think one trait of a good leader is somebody who is aware of what's going on around him or her and is constantly asking a question, is there something we should do differently? Is there some opportunity that's appeared? Is there something we're doing that's not right and we should change? And then having the ability first to see that, secondly to conceive of what should be done or shouldn't be done, and then thirdly, to persuade people to follow him or her. One thing about leadership is you can't get wedded to what you do, and you have to be willing to change. You have to evolve with the times, and getting to leadership, you have to lead the times. So you can't just act, wait and see what other people are doing. If you want to be really successful, you have to anticipate what people are going to want and how they want to get it. Uh, and to me, a key part of leadership and management is trying to figure that out before other people do. Again, always from the point of view of what's good for the consumer. The uh, John Eagle Advantage card grew out of a series of decisions that we made over time that uh, actually no one of which turned out the way we expected to, but in the end all worked out absolutely beautifully, leaving, starting with the first decision which was to uh, install scanners and ending up with the end, which is the development of fuel perks and food perks. It, in the end, this has been tremendous. This is one of the best loyalty programs I've ever seen, if not the best. But it, I can't say we did it on purpose. We, you know, it was a series of things that happened. And uh, so the decision to get into scanning was actually made on false premise, which was that uh, there would be a, a big IRR in terms of labor saving from installing the scanners in the store. And the IRR was supposed to come from uh, not having to put prices on the items. That did materialize. And the concept that it, the cashiers could go faster, actually the cashiers aren't any faster with scanning than they were entering stuff. Uh, and so I'm not sure we ever got the IRR that we had hoped to get. But what happened was once the scanners came in, customers started to demand them because the customer's perception was that it was faster, even though it wasn't. And uh, so we ended up, as did every supermarket, installing all the scanners. Uh, Sort of the next development that came then was the idea of a customer card. And the concept of the customer card was you could make it into a loyalty program by offering discounts or other loyalty type things to uh, people who had the card. Uh, and then the, not only would that create loyalty, but we would then have this enormous flow of information that presumably we could mine and improve our customer relationship marketing. Uh, we do give the discounts. People do like the discounts. I think, let, let me put it this way, there are many supermarket companies who don't have Advantage cards, and they seem to be doing just as well as we are. So uh, yeah, did, that, did we get an ROI from that? I don't know. Maybe we did not maybe we didn't. Having said that, if we hadn't installed the scanners and we hadn't uh, developed the Advantage card, we could not have done Fuel Perks. And Fuel Perks has been a 
it's transformed the whole company. Uh, so, you know, did we think of fuel perks when we started this process? Absolutely not. Fuel perks came along later. I think a mistake that many businesses make, I've seen we make this mistake and places where I'm on the board, they make the same mistake, is thinking how does it benefit the company. Nothing is going to benefit the company in the long run unless it benefits the customer. So I think the place to start is asking how can it benefit the customer. And there I think if you uh, think of the possibilities of what one could do with the information in terms of benefiting the customer, they're, they're really, I, don't, I suppose they're not limitless, but they're obviously very large. You know, we have uh, something like 2.2 uh, million active Advantage card holders at any time. They're all different. They don't all like the same thing. They don't come with the same frequently frequency. They live in different neighborhoods. They're different ethnicities. To, to truly understand and help the customer, you have to understand who they are. And the, the kind of information that is contained in the records can help you do that. So the best way to help us is to help the customer. We just have to figure out what the customer, what various types of customers want, and then individualize the service we provide them given the information. We think our health depends on the health of the communities in which we live. Uh, so we have a selfish interest in making sure that communities are healthy, economically, socially, physically, et cetera. Uh, but we also uh, just believe it's the right thing to do. So uh, at Giant Eagle, we give 5% of our free pre-tax profits away every year to various types of community causes. That's a fixed rule. If, uh, you know, if we're not making the budget, somebody sticks their hand up and says, let's cut the charitable contributions, the answer is no. I mean, it's a, it's a straight 5%. And uh, that's, that's our attitude. Uh, somebody from our HR department came and said, why don't we try hiring a disadvantaged worker? And uh, my, my thoughts were that if we had people who weren't as physically capable or as mentally capable as most people, that we might end up alienating our customers. Uh, and so my answer to this was, It'd be a nice thing to do, but we can't afford to alienate our customers. We're not going to do it. Fortunately, the person in our HR department felt strongly about this and was very persistent and kept coming back to me and coming back to me. And finally, in a sort of a weak moment, I said, fine, try one. And we, I, I mean, I should have done that much earlier, but in any event, I did what I did. Uh, anyway, we tried a person and discovered not only did we not alienate customers, but customers actually liked the idea that we were hiring people like this. And from that, our program has expanded to where we have hundreds and hundreds of disadvantaged people working at various jobs in our stores. I wondered at first, why do customers like this? And I've come to the conclusion that in certainly many, if not most, extended families, there is somebody like this. And people understand what the problems are and appreciate that those folks are getting a chance to be productive citizens just like everybody else. I'll tell you, one of my mentors was my father. And uh, here's a story that illustrates what I'm talking about. Uh, 
my mother passed away about six years ago. And my mother could never throw anything away. She lived in a big house, and the whole house, from one end to the other, was full of paper. My sister, who was very interested in history and that sort of thing, decided she was going to go through every paper of my mother. And one of the things she found was a letter that my father had written to me, I think, after my freshman year in college. There's a paragraph at the end of the letter in which he says he had read a paper I had written for some course I had taken in college, and that he was extraordinarily impressed with how I had taken the issue, whatever that issue was, and analyzed it from many different perspectives. And the last sentence is, David, as far as I'm concerned, if that's all you ever learned to do in college, I will be happy. Much of one's ability to change with the times comes from his or her ability to have perspective and to be able to take any issue, whatever it is, and look at it not just from one narrow point of view, but from as wide a possible perspective as, as one can. In order to do that, I think it's really important to have at least some knowledge of as many different fields and areas of human interest as you can, even if they don't appear to be relevant to the subject. And so I think the broader one's education is, the, uh, the better.